Okay, so we're back again with this thing, which is my prototype, prototype, sorry, uh, joystick tester. Uh, we're going to do a few things tonight. We're going to just test it out because last time I finished this video with my very dodgy Xena diode uh, voltage regulator, um, which is not the best way to make a voltage regulator. Uh, but I thought it'd be worth a try because I've got a lot of Xena diodes and <laughs> it's very easy and cheap. So the day we're going to actually test that it works uh, and we're going to see how well it works. So once we put some load on our voltage regulator, how well does it still supply 5 volts? So we're going to go back to this joystick. So I actually played around with this afterwards and this one seems to actually work perfectly fine except for the top button. And we're going to take this apart so I want to see what's on the inside because I'm a bit confused as you will see by the auto fire so let's just activate it so I'm going to plug it in so we're going to add a few little quick features onto our voltage into our tester before we finish off um, but so if I press the button the, the blue light comes on I forgot to change these around so these are actually the wrong way around but that doesn't really matter so you can see strangely it works real nice now um, so it even seems to keep the same brightness no matter what you do. So it looks like as a voltage regulator it's working well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to test a few things out. But the first thing we're going to do is right now I don't know that this thing is even working. So we are going to add a red LED. That's going to be our power source, uh, power source, uh, power indicator LED uh, and we can do that since it's right near, where's the best place to put this, it's not going to look great so once we've got it all worked out I'm going to go so what's going to happen is so on this side here I've only hooked up the positive rail so I'm just going to hook the positive rail directly over to there so the positive rail is going into there and then where, where did I put it I had I don't want it to be particularly bright uh, because there's no need for it to be bright so I've got a couple of a variety of resistors here and I'm going to use these 1.2 kilo ohms um, so 1,200 1, ohm resistor and that's just going to go, so this is going to be a bit messy, from the negative leg straight to negative here. So the light should come on when I plug it in. This is not the best resistor, is it? It's an old, it's a new school one that has, oh, it's very hot. So that's an alarming thing. But I guess that's what you, oh, I short-circuited it. So right now it's plugged in and we're not seeing any lights. It's not plugged in. The, light, the, the wire fell out. So I'm a bit alarmed by how warm that one is. But that is to be expected because that's actually absorbing. So in fact, that's a very good point. As a voltage regulator, when nothing is plugged in, uh, is all I guess all the all the energy is going to be absorbed into this thing here. Um, where's my little diagram actually? <laughs> So there was a there's a there's a mistake from beforehand, and so putting a little power LED in is going to help the situation a bit because uh, it's going to distribute the power a bit more. So be, so what I currently have is there's a little uh, diode there. I'm going to make sure I've got this all the right way around. I think I've got that in the wrong place. No wonder this is working so well. All right, that one goes there. Then what's this one doing? Let's just look at my little picture. I think it goes into there. All right, so that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> so if this was this is, oh, that hurt. I have a I have a, I have a cut on my finger and that hurt. Um, so now it works. So now we've got our voltage regulator stuff, I believe, um, and we're just going to test that. So there's a power LED. What I was just saying is in this circuit here so there's my uh, 
uh, what would they call that? <laughs> it's a protection, a current protection diode or something like that. So it's to stop, it's to stop you putting the batteries in the wrong way. We, we went through this. And there's a resistor there to absorb the extra voltage. And there's our Zenith diode, which requires 5.1 or about that volts across it. And it will, that's what the voltage drop will be when you're in the reversed biased way. So in this case, you're actually, and it doesn't look like that. I drew the wrong kind of diode. Uh, I wondered about this afterwards. Those are Stocky diodes, I think. I think the difference is just squarer. Something like that. Um, I should really get the, the symbol correct. But in this case here, there is no load when you're not pressing it, when you're not moving any of the switches and no LED comes on, there's no actual load. So all of the remaining, so it's going to be whatever the current is here, which is quite high, because this is a 100 ohm resistor, uh, going through here, and it's only going to be, so 9 volts minus 0.6 volts for this one, uh, minus the 5 volts for that one. So it's pretty much around 3 volts. Is that right? 4 volts? 3 volts. 3 volts. Uh, <laughs> math not good. Uh, 3 volts or so. Just a bit over 3 volts going through here at 100 ohms. So that is V equals IR. So I equals V divided by R. So 3 divided by 100. Um, well, that doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> that doesn't sound right at all. Hold on, I'm going to do a piece of paper thing. Um, well, it's reasonably high, anyhow. But now it's not getting hot, so that's something. Why was it getting hot before? Because it wasn't even plugged into that. Uh, is it even plugged into it now? It is. It goes through there, through there, to there, to there. Oh, I get why it was doing No, I don't. It's going the other way around. Oh, we're going to spend all day trying to work out why that didn't work. But we're not going to. Anyway, I'm going to come back and I'm going to come back with the equations for that later on. The important thing is, is that this is a better thing because now there's always some load and so this is being shared uh, and this is kind of um, a bit better. So there's more, there's more load here so the current won't be so high and everybody will be happy and things won't get really hot and explode. And so it all seems to work. Let's just... How much time have we taken to do this? Because I want, wanted to do several things. Uh, we're going to do this. We've got to. We've got to. We've got to have a play with the other one, the other joystick, because it's quite intriguing to see how that one actually works. So what I thought was the auto fire is not the auto fire. That's just me pushing the joystick by accident. Uh, so the question here is the voltage drop across the LED and this resistor. Um, which is just my power, my power on indicator, should be still about five volts when we put this thing on, and I think it's got to go this way. So I don't know if it's going to show up. And what are we getting? It's probably dropped already a fair bit. No, it's still 5.06. So to be lazy, <laughs> oh no, we've got to try to trick it into having the LEDs on all the time. And this should be quite simple because all we have to do is, where do I put them all? We're going to turn some of the LEDs on all the time and all we're going to do is we're just going to sh essentially short them to, well not short them to ground, um, but if we remember what's happening here is, so from the positive rail we're going through a resistor into the LED and then that's going into the joystick and then a joystick, when you move it in a direction, pulls it, um, connects a switch, and that pulls it to ground. So we can make an LED come on just by plugging it straight into ground. So we're going to put a couple of these guys to ground and have them on just to test because I want to see how much the voltage, my, regula my regulated voltage changes. And we'll do that across... Across my little friend, the uh, red LED, and we are currently reading uh, 5.02. So with two LEDs on, three LEDs on, uh, we've got a slight drop down. So we need to put one on because in, in actual use, we're only going to ever have three potential uh, LEDs on at once. So... 
as I've said, <laughs> it's a bit hard to tell what I'm doing here. Uh, this is not the best way of making a voltage regulator, and I've done that the wrong way around. What have I done here? All right, it goes to the other leg. All right, so now we have so we have the maximum three LEDs. Should have done the blue one because the blue one's different. So we'll do the blue one. So we'll have two yellow ones and we'll have one blue one. If you have the fire button on and you're in a negative and you're in a diagonal direction. Uh, so there we go, that's that on. So we'll just check what our voltage drop is one last time and before we move on to the next part. And ooh, it's going down a bit, hasn't it? So it's five point four point oh, hold on. About four point nine five. I hope that comes up on the camera. Yeah, it does. So we're down to four point nine five. So with three LEDs plus the power one on. We're not quite at 5 volts, but I think that's fine. Uh, that's all about within what we, we care about. So I'm going to accept that for now. I doubt any of these things have uh, TTL chips in them. So that's the big problem is that they're the ones that won't be 5 volt. Any of these things won't have TTL chips in them because they're the ones that are uh, only like 5 volts and they don't have too much of a leeway. But I think so far this all looks good. Um, so everything's going to have a 555 timer or some kind of other uh, A-stable multi-vibrator circuitry or something like that in order to make the auto fire work. And that might change if you have a different voltage. It won't change, I don't know. I don't think it changes with the with the 555s. But it will change with the A-stable multi-vibrators. Um, and we're going to investigate that if that's true later on because I'm I don't exactly know the answer to that So I want to build we're going to be talking about those kind of things, but Let's just gloss over that for the moment. We have one more thing to add on before I finish my circuit uh, And I've promptly gone and lost the thing I was going to use No, I haven't here it is that's the one thing is well I plugged the battery in but then I have to switch it off <laughs> I have to unplug it in order to turn the whole thing off so obviously what we need is an on and off switch. And I think I've run out of room uh, as a place to put it. Where am I going to put this? That's not ridiculously silly. Um, well, we can probably stick it right about there. I wonder if we can be clever actually. So I'm going to stick it over there and then I'm going to move this resistor and when I take this resistor out the whole thing should turn off which is great that's exactly what we want to see and then when I plug it back into here nothing's going to happen but now I can switch it all on and then I can switch it off and we can take these wires out because we actually want it to work so there we go we've got a on and off switch power indicator voltage regulator and a whole bunch of little LEDs for each direction and it still works but when I press this button it doesn't work so I don't know if that's just a fake button I have the funny feeling that's the way it was when I tried these when I was younger I'm impressed this one still works I should I think this probably ups the value of these because they seriously were terrible when I was a kid uh, but it has the it has this auto fire feature and when I press when I turn the auto fire on it just seems to do nothing but make the light make it come on so it's just always on or it's always uh, or you can turn it off and that's not how auto fires worked they would be sending out pulses uh, in order to um, send multiple so shoot multiple bullets in a game that you were playing so we're going to bring this one back on so this is all, this chunky one and this one does do, it does have like a 555 timer in the bottom. And so you would think that it has an auto fire. And it has two switches. One's the CPC one, which I'll briefly talk about. Uh, but there's one up here, which is N and S. And I'm going to actually explain what those mean. Uh, <laughs> I didn't actually expect this be, to be the case. I thought that would be a switch uh, for auto fire. But it's not a switch for auto fire um, it is a switch for something different 
Uh, which makes me actually think one more thing that we could put on this is just plugging it in and out is an indicator to say whether or not uh, it's plugged in or not and maybe we could do that because there's a 5 volt input I think I've gone and misplaced uh, oh here it is um, let's just quickly go to oh we're never going to find this are we here we go here we go, here we go. Um, so if we look on this page here there's a 5 volt and a ground so maybe uh, how would that work well, maybe, uh, no, no, I don't know if I can do it. Uh, what I was thinking is somehow tapping into the line between 5 volts and ground. Uh, and if there is a connection, <laughs> uh, then you have to use some kind of pretty, uh, MOSFET thing, perhaps, or a CMOS chip in order to do this. Uh, uh, I don't know. Hmm, I have to think about that. Is there some way of actually showing an indication of whether or not a joystick is actually being plugged in? But then not all things use that 5 volt line. It's only for some joysticks. Some joysticks will completely ignore that and never even touch it. Uh, so anyway, we're back to this one. And so this one seems to work fine too. Uh, but you may, may notice that it's not as bright. But then if I flick the switch, it's kind of as bright as the other one. Um, so we've got these four directions. Everything, these, both these joysticks actually work perfectly fine, and both the buttons on this one work fine. So that's that's something. So I'm pressing both the buttons here. Um, but what does the switch do? Well, this switch actually. <laughs> so when I go to here, the directions will actually be slightly dimmer, um, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, except I have to get out my mini little oscilloscope and I've actually realized how to use this better so and we're going to have a quick check of what's really going on here and it's really kind of interesting I think where's the extra cable here um, because it is dimmer but it's not because it's sending a lower voltage through it uh, it's actually what the 55 five timer is being used for um, so you have to think while well, I'm going to go through this, I'm not going to say what those two letters mean. So the two letters are N and S. So while I'm quickly doing this, you have to, as the, as the viewer, kind of ponder for a second as to what's really happening. So how am I going to do this? Well, it doesn't really matter where I put it. Oh, it does, kind of. I'm going to, actually, I'll just put it there. All right. That should be fine. All right, so <laughs> it's a bit of a mess on this thing. We don't need this at the moment, so we can move that out of the way. Um, that can boot up. All right, so if you can guess what's happening, we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, skipping, dun dun dun. I don't think we're going to have time to take that joystick apart. Oh well. <laughs> but ooh, look at that. Um, cute. So now if I, I'm going to go back to N and then hopefully, there you go, you can see that when I let go, uh, the, it moves up and down. So there's a nice signal there. And I guess we can kind of ignore what the actual values are. Um, I feel like I should uh, move it around a bit. That's oh, going to take me forever. All right. <laughs> That's not what I want. Oh, is this thing up, this is upside down? Shouldn't it say something different? Well, anyway, you can see <laughs> this is the most the worst one. You obviously can tell that I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but yes, it does do something when I do that. But if I switch it to S mode, and then I do the same thing, you get this very. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, 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 well, you can move it around like this. Can you actually zoom in? <laughs> you can't. You can't zoom in that way, but you might be able to. Uh, right, move it there. Uh, and I want to change that to 50 milliseconds. Done. And maybe I have to go back to doing it. So unhold. I'm going 
gonna have to change that one. Uh, what's the smallest time second? 10 milliseconds. All right. <laughs> I think I need to use a pen for this. Uh, let me use this. Done. All right. All right, and then we will take a snapshot. So you can see it is going up and down, up and down. And what it's really doing is these actually stand for, here we go, big reveal, normal speed and slow speed. And so in this thing, this joystick has the most bizarre feature that you can possibly imagine, which is it has a way of slowing you down in your game. And of course it has no idea what the game you're playing is or how to interact with it. And the game that you're playing has no idea about this idea of slowing you down. And so it's just slowing you down by only sending the movement uh, pulse, movement signal uh, intermittently, or how do how, how you say that word, so not all the time. <laughs> So in little slots. So your, your character on your screen will be essentially moving in little jerks as it goes along. But it's quite, you know, fast. Like, I don't know how to understand exactly what. I guess each little square is 10 milliseconds. So that's roughly 10 milliseconds pulses there. Um, and so it slows you, it supposedly slows you down in your game. And that's a really odd feature to have. <laughs> Um, I don't know why they thought about that. I should look up the reviews for these kind of joysticks because I do remember these slow down features. Uh, but you kind of would think, like when you have that kind of feature, that what would happen is you want something that slows the game down so that you have more time to think about what you're doing uh, and cheat, so a kind of cheat. And there were things, there were tools in vintage computers to slow games down, but they were very different and more involved than this kind of thing. Uh, in this case here, you're not slowing the game down, you're slowing the player down so that you're, it's much, much harder. So it's a very odd feature for a joystick to have, but that's what that 555 timer is for. So it doesn't actually have auto fire. Uh, I don't think that actually affects the, the, um, the joystick controller though, because you can tell, we don't actually have to have the thing on for now. Uh, well, we are going to, we are going to be testing this, so we might as well stick it onto the joystick thing. So I'm just going to test, skip, all right, what happens? So no, the joystick isn't affected by uh, the the speed controller. So, I mean, not the joystick, the, the fire button is not um, affected by this thing. So uh, that, that switch has, that switch does the opposite of how a f auto fire works. It pulses the movements, but it doesn't pulse the fire. Uh, and this bit thing at the bottom for the CPC is simply just for a different type of computer, the Amstrad CPC, which had slightly different uh, joystick configurations and things like that. Uh, though when I plugged my joysticks into a CPC normally, they always seem to work fine. But I think there was a funny thing with with the auto fires and CPCs. So we're going to quickly change, and we're going to just play around with this. Uh, I should probably just go and look at the menu for a second. Uh, default signal test, uh, recall wave, send date, frequency, something, 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 uh, preset dashboard. It doesn't have uh, power off time. We'll make more. Auto off. Uh, we're going to make that. Um, five minutes because it's kind of annoying. Done. All right, so we will now plug in uh, this thing. So this is plugging in the this joystick. So we're going back to this one. I really wish I could find my Speed King. They were the best joysticks ever. Uh, some people will say that there's another brand uh, that has two buttons and is what the Commodore 64 DTV looks like but I think the Speed King was the best one um, but anyway when I find one of those I'm going to show you uh, this one says it has an auto fire so it's all working we're getting we're getting pulses when we do the fire button uh, let's just put the auto fire on so this one actually does do that so it is pulsing it it's very very fast I kind of expected it to be a lot slower um, because if it's too fast, 
so reading this, it's about 10 milliseconds. Well, I guess that seems awfully fast because on a Commodore 64 or any old vintage computer, in fact, even on a modern computer, uh, it's not going to be checking the joystick thing all the time. It's going to be checking it once per frame, probably, that you're updating the screen. And on, a, on those kind of computers, you'll be either updating it 50 times a second or 60 times a second, depending on what part of the world you were in. Uh, and so that's probably, where's my, I have a calculator here. Um, if you are... Alright, so we have milliseconds, so these are milliseconds, so if I do 1000 divided by, uh, let's just be uh, 60, okay, so basically a frame is 16.7 milliseconds, if I think I've got that correct, um, and if this is about 10 milliseconds, it's probably be a bit bigger than 10 milliseconds. I don't really know if it's 10 milliseconds or not. Because uh, I don't know what the little boxes mean. But you would assume that that means that this is a... Each little box on this thing here is 10 milliseconds. So it's a pretty much a 10 millisecond pulse and then off. Um, it would just seem to me that's not a very effective way of doing an auto fire. Um, because... Uh, you'd probably be reading it every in, in the middle of the thing. So you're not going to get this off bit. You might even completely miss the off bit, or you only get it some of the time. You won't get it all the time. So it's not a consistent off. You'd probably want it to be a bit higher. And maybe that's an indication that this thing is not working 100% because the timing is out. Um, and that's what I wanted to look at. And we've got a few minutes left. So how am I going to do this? I am going to have to bypass. So I've got this one here, and then I was going to get two wires. So we're going to use blue for negative, and that one's going to go into there. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, we're going to have this one. This one's regulated five volts coming out of here, and I just want to see um, what we get. I probably should not be plugging it in like that. <laughs> so we'll just turn it off for a second. Uh, and then transfer this battery over to here. And now we're back in business, but now we're running straight off my five volts. And so I don't think the switch makes any difference anymore, but we'll keep it turned off so that this, the, the voltage regulator part doesn't come into it. And if we look at it, it looks roughly the same size. I wish, it was, I, wish I was smarter with this and then I could measure it all. Um, so it doesn't look like it's changed a lot. Like that still looks roughly like it's 10 milliseconds. Um, so I guess we can say, well, that looks brighter though, doesn't it? Which I guess we can go through and try and work out why. Well, that's because I've got this current limiting thing here. So it's not getting as much current going into it. So this voltage regulator thing here isn't really supplying a lot of current. Um, so it's, only, it's going to be limited by... So I'm going to quickly do that. How much time we've got? 28 seconds. We're not going to do that. So that might be a problem. So we're going to take this apart, have a look what's inside, just check it all out, and see what we should... We'll, we'll find out what the resistors and the capacitors used were and see if it matches up uh, with our expected thing here. So we'll work out what the timer inside says it should be, and then we'll see what it looks like. But anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. I hope that was kind of interesting. Uh, bye.